This is Mai Kun, an Egyptian mummy. He is cute and adorable, unlike other mummies. The story starts with Sora, a high school boy, who lives with a woman and she is busy working in her room. As the doorbell ring, he opens the door, and a delivery girl arrives with a very huge package. The package contains a huge coffin with a thick letter sent by his dad from Egypt. In letter, he says that inside it is an adorable mummy, but he won't believe it, thinking it might be a scary one, because his father keeps sending him dangerous things. Once his father send him good luck scarecrow, but it tried to stab him. Another time, a cursed Daruma doll, and even a doll that ward off evil but caused trouble instead. Knowing his father, Sora worries that the cute mummy might also try to end his life. As the coffin starts to shake, Sora grabs a press as a defense against the mummy. In that instant, the coffin opens, and from it comes out a tiny and cute mummy that startles Sora. Though it was small, Sora doesn't want to let his guard down as it might harm him. He uses a cloth hanger to push it, and then manages to get it back into the coffin. As he closes the coffin and thinks of sending mummy back to Egypt, tears come out of it. The little mummy was crying. Sora starts wiping the tears on the floor. The mummy wants to help, but stopped by Sora from moving further. It hides, then comes back and knocks the notebook as if it were a door. Sora isn't sure if it's safe to keep the mummy, so he tells it to go into the coffin. But the mummy doesn't want to go. In its own way, the mummy expresses that it wants to stay and help Sora in household chores. Sora tells the mummy that due to its small size, it might not be able to help much, which brings tears to the little mummy's eyes. So, he allows it to try to help around the house, but as expected, working seemed impossible for it. And tiny mummy ends up wetting itself. Sora dries it with a towel. Now Sora is worried about what he's supposed to do with it. He then reads his father's letter where he wrote down everything he knows about the mummy so far and a warning never to take off the bandages. Sora then reads a book about mummies, but the ones described in the book don't look anything like this. As the poor mummy starts crying again, Sora eventually decides to keep it. But, if he's going to take care of it, it needs a name. As Sora thinks of a name, his pet dog, Pachai, shows up. He hugs Pachai, and the dog starts feeling good and barking. Seeing Pachai happy with Sora, the mummy also wants to be hugged and starts imitating Pachai's barking. Sora is surprised that mummy can bark. It runs over and jump on Sora. He tries to catch the mummy to prevent it from falling, but it hides behind his hoodie cap. Sora puts Pachai down to handle the mummy, but Pachai starts barking out of jealousy and Sora has to keep him in his arms. The mummy notices this and barks again to get Sora's attention. But Pachai gets angry and barks at the mummy. They both start barking at each other while Sora is trying to calm them down, thinking, will these two ever get along? Suddenly, he remembers that he has to name the mummy and names it Mai. Upon receiving a name, Mai becomes extremely happy that he gets to stay here. He moves closer to Sora and starts rubbing his cheeks to show that he's happy. Now, Sora shows Mai Kun how to drink water, but he struggles and ends up getting wet. As a result, Sora gives water in a bottle cap, best for Mai Kun's size to drink. Now, Pache comes to Sora with his bowl, wanting food. But Sora suddenly becomes worried because he doesn't know what to give to Mai. While Pache eats his dog food, Mai watches it, and Sora tries to find something for Mai to eat. By the time he finishes cooking, he notices that Mai is eating dog food from Pachai's bowl. He stops Mai Kun and then tries to give him cucumbers, but he refuses. However, Mai Kun enjoys apples and noodles as well. Sora writes down all the things Mai Kun likes to eat. After Sora steps away for a bit, he returns to find Mai peacefully asleep beside Pachai. It looks like they've become good friends. During school, Sora excitedly tells his friend Tezuki that his dad has sent him a tiny mummy, and he invites him to his house to meet Mai Kun. When they get back home, Sora sees that Mai is completely dry and panics. But then he gives it some water and Mai quickly gets back to normal. Tazuki is amazed because, like Sora, he had no idea that mummies could be like this. Sora tells Mai that Tazuki is his friend. But Mai is a bit scared of Tazuki and doesn't want to be touched by him. Seems like Mai-kun is a bit of a scaredy cat so it's probably him being cautious of a new person showing up. Later, Sora decides to take a bath and plan to do it alone but Mai wants to join him. Sora took a bath with him and little guy was swimming around the bathtub to his heart's content. But when Sora takes him out, he absorbs water like crazy and turns into a water balloon. Next day, we learn that Sora isn't doing well in school. His friend Tezuki offers him some notes to copy, which he will collect later. But on reaching home, Sora is shocked to see that Mai is dry again. So, he gives him water and Mai is fine again. Sora wonders why Mai keeps drying out. Well, this mystery will be solved later. Now, Sora needs to make dinner and Mai wants to help. He tries to hold a knife that's way too big for him. So Sora makes a knife and gives him a tiny knife that's really cute. Mai is super happy to help and starts cutting the vegetables Sora gave him. But when he looks away for a moment, Mai slips and almost falls. Sora quickly saves him, but he gets a little hit on his face. Mai-kun feels sorry and starts crying. 
Sora comforts him, saying it's okay. Hearing this Mai gets normal and starts rubbing against Sora's finger. Dinner is being prepared, and Keed can smell it from her room, where she's still working. Afterwards, Sora copies the notes and Mai tries to help by turning pages, but accidentally wrinkles Tezuki's notebook. So, Sora makes a small notebook just for Mai. Right then, Tezuki shows up. Sora gives back Tezuki's notebook and goes to get snacks. Mai gets scared of being alone with Tezuki. When Sora returns with snacks, he notices that Mai is still scared of Tezuki. When he says the snacks look tasty, Mai thinks he means to eat him. Sora leaves Mai with Tezuki again for a bit. Tezuki wants to touch Mai, so he offers a bite of a snack. But Mai thinks Tezuki wants to fatten him up to eat him, so he shivers and cries because he's so scared. This actually makes Tezuki more curious to touch Mai. Finally, he tricks Mai Kun into getting closer and grabs him. He tries to take off Mai Kun's bandages to see what's under them. But Sora hits him. Sora shows how protective he can be and can seem a bit scary when he wants to. But there might be a point to it. What if Mai Kun's bandages are like human skin? To make things better, Sora gives Tezuki some dog food. Tezuki uses the food to say sorry, and Mai comes closer, takes the food, and starts rubbing Tezuki's finger to show that he forgives him. Now, they become friends. Tezuki feels bad for toying with something so cute. At tea time, Sora tells Tezuki that he wants to bring Mai to school to stop him from drying out. Tezuki thinks Sora is joking, but he's serious. The next day, during class, Mai keeps trying to come out of Sora's bag and bothers him while he's studying. After class Sora tells Mai to act like a stuffed toy at school and Mai promised to do so. But when he was thinking to place Mai on desk, he sneezes. A girl in their class named Asan notices this. She finds it cute and says she's never heard a stuffed toy sneeze. This makes Sora and Tezuki worried about being caught. So, Sora acts as if he was the one who sneezed. Asa then starts touching Mai on which Sora tells her that he will lend her Mai. He then quickly makes several plushies similar to Mai. However, due to a mix-up, Asa accidentally takes the real Mai Kun. Upon realizing this, Sora rushes to find Asa. During physical education class, Asa leaves Mai in her locker. Sora and Tezuki plan to rescue him. Mai Kun thinks of escaping and reuniting with Sora. He gets out of the locker, crawls through a hole in the wall, and enters the air ducts. There, he encounters a big rat that starts chasing him. Sora and Tezuki continue searching for Mai during physical education class, and although they meet Asa but don't spot Mai, Sora has a race to finish, so he runs fast to complete it quickly and keep looking for Mai. Meanwhile, Mai is still running from the rat. Sora already knows that Asa left Mai in the locker room, so he plans to go there. Unexpectedly, Mai comes out from the bushes, still running from the rat. While Sora holds Mai, Tezuki catches the rat, and tells him that he doesn't need to pretend to be a stuffed toy at that moment. Sora is relieved to find Mai. Later, Asa talks to Sora and tells him that she lost the stuffed toy he gave her, but this time Sora gives her the real stuffed toy and she feels happy to have it. The next morning, we finally meet the woman Sora lives with. She steps out as Sora is outside putting the trash and is surprised to see his bento box filled with dog food. When Sora returns, she starts questioning about why he has dog food in his box. She begins to feel down. Sora comforts her by patting her and clarifying that the dog food is for Mai Kun. He then introduces Mai Kun to her, and we also learn that she is Sora's aunt, Keed. Keed isn't surprised to find a tiny mummy now living with them. But when Sora tells about the big casket Mai Kun came in, she gets really excited. She hugs the casket with joy, saying she always wanted it. Now Sora is running late for school, so he heads to school with Mai Kun and collapses. He's caught a cold apparently and stays home, locking himself up in his room in order to avoid getting the others sick. He calls his aunt for some water, but due to the fever, he couldn't manage to open the door. His aunt enters through the window, wearing a gas mask for protection, while Mai Kun has a band-aid for a mask. Still, they're kicked out of the room by Sora who is pretty out of it. Sora's aunt keeps Mai Kun close to Pachai and tells him to stay there as she has to cook. She also gives him Sora's handkerchief to keep him warm. However, Mai Kun starts missing Sora and hides his face to cry. Meanwhile, Sora is sweating with a fever, he walks out of his room to change the clothes. He hears Keed shouting and rushes to her. There, Keed shows him Mai Kun, who is dehydrated again. We finally learn why Mai Kun is dehydrated when Sora gets back to school, though. Poor little guy misses Sora so much he cries himself dry each day he was left alone. Realizing this, Sora holds Mai Kun closer, but stumbles due to his fever. Now that he's with Sora, Mai Kun is fine since he doesn't have to be away from him. After resting for a while, Sora wakes up as Tezuki enters his room with medicine and something to eat. Tezuki had to help out a little, since Keed was called back to quite the workload for a bit. Sora asks Tezuki to feed Pachai and Mai Kun as it's almost dinner time. While Mai is eating, he looks so cute. 
At night when Sora was burning with fever, Mai Kun tries to take the rag to wet it, but falls down. The little mummy is too small to carry it to the water bowl, so he climbs there and fills himself with water by falling into the bowl. He becomes Sora's rag, lying on Sora's forehead. He repeated this whole night. The next morning, Sora wakes up and holds Mai Kun, assuring him that he's okay. However, Mai sneezes because he got sick today from staying wet all night to help cool Sora down. Mai Kun is sick and inside a blanket but then he asks Sora to take him out. But Sora says it's cold outside and going out might make Mai even sicker. Mai walks towards the window, desperate to go outside. Sora made Mai Kun his own little scarf and cap to brave the cold which are just the cutest. As he opens the window and places Mai down, Mai jumps and walks toward the ground, starting to dig. Despite his best efforts, it's not enough. Sora watching him has no idea why Mai is doing this. Fortunately, Pachai comes to help, digging a hole quickly. Mai Kun rushes toward it and jumps inside the hole. Sora is surprised and unsure of what to do next. He waits there, but the cold weather causes him to sneeze. Pachai then nudges Sora inside and waits for Mai Kun to come out. Meanwhile, Tezuki is feeling lonely at school without Sora and is followed by someone. Back to Sora, it's been a while and Mai is still not out. Even Pachai seems worried now. Sora hugs Pachai and wonders aloud, what should I do now? This situation deeply affects Sora, triggering a flashback to his childhood. When he tried to help a dying bird, Tezuki has always been the more mature one. He had warned Sora about trying to help the bird, saying Sora would get hurt when the bird died. And when the bird did die, Sora cried. His dad came and comforted him. Sora is so much worried now also. But suddenly Mai Kun popped back out. It seems mummies just need a good dirt nap to recover. Sora becomes extremely happy. However, Mai Kun's stomach starts making sounds. He's hungry. Sora gives him something to eat and watches the cute little mummy as he eats. Tonight, Ki does make it home for dinner and brings a lot of healthy food for Sora and Mai, knowing they were sick. She offers to cook dinner that night. However, when she puts on her glasses, we see a completely different side of her. Whenever she wears glasses, she adopts a more overly endearing persona. But Sora finds it a bit scary. Mai tries to take off her glasses but gets caught by Kid. Just then, Tezuki enters. He isn't even phased by her. He simply flicks those glasses off and teases her. Later, they all had a nice dinner and Mai Kun happily enjoyed his favorite noodles. When Tezuki was leaving, Sora thanked him for taking care of him while he was sick. Tazuki replied, you're like family to me, showing how close their friendship is. At night, Sora writes about the little mummy in his observation diary, while Mai sleeps rolled up in a blanket, looking so adorable. As Tazuki continued walking home, he heard someone following him. He stopped and asked for it to come out, it turned out to be a baby oni. Almost instantly, Tazuki imagined himself with the oni, envisioning the oni all grown up. The scenes were incredibly funny, a big buff oni, alongside a normal-sized Tazuki. The contrast was just too much for him. He started walking away, but the Oni persisted in following him. Tezuki told it to go away and directed it to Sora's house if it felt cold, providing the necessary directions. The Oni nodded like it understood, and Tezuki left. As Tezuki reaches to home, he directly went to his room. Once Tezuki opens his bedroom door, we see the poor Oni shivering outside by his window. He asks the Oni why it came here when he had told it to go to Sora's house. He closes the curtains, saying, I won't let you in, go somewhere else. After he finishes his shower, his sister enters his room and asks for help with her homework. Once he assists her, he sits in his room and checks, the Oni is still there. So, he decides to let the Oni in and the poor guy seems to look scuffed up. While he goes to get something to eat for the Oni, he finds the Oni already asleep in his bed. Tezuki moves it away, saying, First, you need to take a bath, you're all dirty. The Oni jumps into his hot teacup, thinking it might get cleaned. Tezuki places a cold pad on it and calls it dumb. Later, the little Oni sleeps next to Tezuki in his bed. Early the next morning, Tezuki just throws it out, telling it not to come back. At school, during lunchtime, Tezuki tells Sora everything that happened the previous night, when he found the Oni child following him. Meanwhile, Mai Kun is enjoying his lunch. Sora tells Tezuki that the Oni might have been kicked out after the last Setsuban festival, and he's just been wandering around all alone. Sora convinces Tezuki to let the Oni stay with him, but Tezuki tells him he already told Oni to go away in the morning and felt sad about that. To make him feel better, Sora shares some cookies with Tezuki. Later at night, when Tezuki returns, he again sees the Oni outside his window. He lets him in, but the next morning, he throws him out again. However, the Oni keeps coming, and Tezuki even feeds him, even though he throws him away every morning. Why Tezuki throws him away when he cares about the Oni is something we will learn about later. Now, his sister also knows about Oni and she asks him why he doesn't give a name to it. The next day, he tells Sora that the Oni now staying with him. 
So, Sora invites him to his house so that the Oni can play with Maikun. Upon hearing this, Tezuki starts thinking about the Oni. He recalls when he found the Oni, which was dirty and had scars on its body. In that moment, Tezuki reminisces about past memories of when he first met Sora. Sora was all alone, and when Tezuki greeted him, he noticed a spirit creature with Sora. Sora explained that these creatures were known to share information about humans they knew and trusted with other spirits, and they appeared to those humans only when they needed help. This might be why Tezuki began seeing these creatures more often. Earlier, he had found a wounded dragon and thought of tending to its injuries. Now, it's the Oni who has started living with him. Tonight, when Tezuki reaches home, the Oni seems to be in a bad mood. Oni is a bit of the jealous type. He found Tezuki's Maikun doll and waited for him to come, and was just there like who is this? Tezuki let him have the doll, but he just threw it away and looked relieved that he's the only one for Tezuki. The next day, Tezuki takes him to Sora's place so he can play with Maikun, their first playdate. At first, Oni is somewhat scared of Maikun. As Maikun tries to approach him, he starts running away. However, after a while, they begin playing tag, and Pachai also joins them in play. And now, both seem to get along better. Well, Maikun got a new friend. While Mai and Oni spend their time together, Sora asks Tezuki what is he going to name the little baby Oni. It should have a proper name if he's going to take care of it. After several attempts at giving him human last names, he decides on Connie. Upon hearing that he is named Connie, the Oni child shows a thumbs up to Tezuki, indicating that he likes the name. To celebrate this new friendship, they decide to make sushi rolls. Maikun is quite skilled at making them already, having helped out before. But Connie needed a little assistance. After numerous attempts, Connie presents the best one to Tezuki, seeking his approval, and then pops it into Tezuki's mouth. Well, that's funny. In the end, Tezuki and Sora make sushi rolls that look like Oni and Maikun. Oni tries one and gives a thumbs up to show he likes it. While Maikun's eyes fill with tears of joy and Sora comforts him. Back to home, when Tezuki enters his room, he sees Oni sleeping with the Maikun stuffed toy he had thrown away yesterday. It seems Oni is already missing his new friend, Maikun, and he looks cute while asleep. Suddenly, he wakes up, and Tezuki tells him it's time for a bath. Oni pretends to be asleep and starts snoring. Tezuki asks him to stop, but Oni snores even louder. However, when Tezuki calls him by his name, Connie, he instantly wakes up and starts kicking Tezuki's fingers. Tezuki realizes that Connie just wanted to be called by his name, so he teases him a bit, and Connie kicks him back. Next day, in class Mai was looking at picture book, suddenly he peeps out from inside the desk. Sora tells him to stay inside, so no one can see him. Suddenly, Sora saw Lizard on Tezuki's desk and wonders why it is there. Tezuki picks it up and says that it's not real. It turns out it was the doing of another classmate who expected Tezuki to get startled. Seeing Mai's curiosity about the lizard, Sora takes a fake one from his classmate. During break time, Mai seems delighted as he plays with the lizard, wrapping it up with bandages. He excitedly runs over to Sora to show him. But Sora points out that the bandage is coming off the tail. Mai attempts to fix the tail, but he struggles with it. Sora reassures him, saying, it's okay, you just need some practice. Meanwhile, their classmate is planning another prank, but suddenly collides with a boy. The fake lizard falls from his hand, and lands in front of Asa. She gets so scared that she runs away. On the way back home from school, Asa's classmate asks her why she was so frightened of a toy lizard. Asa responds, even if it's a toy, I don't like lizards. Now we see Sora, who has just arrived home with Mai, but he can't find his dog. He then enters his aunt's room, Keed, to check if Pachai is there. Suddenly, he hears a noise from a casket. And when he opens it, Keed is sleeping peacefully inside with Pachai. Later, Sora tells Maikun that he's going out to shop for dinner and tells him the time he'll be back using the clock. He asks Mai if he can stay at home without crying while Sora is shopping. In return, Sora promises to read two bedtime stories for him that night. Little Mummy imagines this and happily agrees with Sora. Mai waves his hand to say goodbye, and Sora heads out for shopping, thinking he'll return soon. The scene shifts to Asa. She arrives home, and upon entering inside, she discovers a letter from her mom stating that she's gone out for shopping. Asa then goes to her room. As she enters, she sees a small dragon standing there. She freezes and watches as the dragon flies and hides under a blanket. The dragon moves around, confused that the girl is just standing there. Suddenly, Asa comes back to her senses and realizes it's a lizard. She becomes frightened and starts crying, as she is scared of lizards. The dragon gives her a toy in an attempt to calm her down, but she runs away and may have fallen down the stairs. The dragon flies down to check on her, but Asa becomes even more scared and rushes to tell her mom. However, she soon realizes that her mom is not at home. Seeing the dragon following her, she starts throwing things at it, including a large table. She believes it's gone, but when she sees it standing next to her, she becomes even more terrified and screams out. 
back with Sora. He checks the time while coming back from the store, hoping Maikun is fine alone. Suddenly, he hears noise from a house and wonders what's going on inside. Then, Asa runs out, screaming and bumps into him. She is so frightened that she can't speak properly. Sora tells her to take a deep breath and explain. She tells him about the lizard and asks him to catch it. Sora goes into her house and is surprised to see everything messy. Asa tells him she did it to get rid of the lizard. Sora goes forward, thinking the lizard might be squashed under a shoebox, and feels bad for it. Meanwhile, Mai is waiting for Sora to come back from shopping as he don't like to be parted away from Sora. As Sora looks for the lizard, he finds something orange in a box. He pulls it out, and it's a poor little dragon. Sora asks if this is the lizard she talked about. But Asa gets even more scared and falls down. The dragon tries to tell Sora through signs that Asa fell from the stairs while running from it and hurt her leg. Sora asks if she hurt her knee, and the little dragon seems worried for her. Asa remembers everything and realizes the dragon followed her because it was worried. She apologizes to the dragon for her actions, and it responds by giving her a flower, indicating that it's okay. In that moment, she hugs the dragon, saying sorry and thanking it for caring about her. With the dragon, she then accompanies Sora to his home. On the way, Sora tells her that he also has a pet like the dragon and asks her if she minds if he invites Tezuki. She agrees and asks if Tezuki and Sora are close friends. Sora tells her that they have been friends since childhood and recalls their past memories. When they were young, Tezuki always came to play with him when he was alone. Throughout middle school, Tezuki stuck around, and they spent a lot of time together. Tezuki looks cold because he is collected but he's actually always been really kind. Meanwhile, at home, Little Mummy is waiting for Sora. Suddenly, he hears Sora's voice and rushes toward him. Asa is confused because Sora brings the same stuffed toy to school. Maikun freezes, not sure if he should act like a stuffed toy or not. Tears start to come from poor Mummy eyes. Sora then holds Maikun gently to comfort him. Afterward, Sora explains everything to Asa, while Maikun and the dragon are getting to know each other. Asa is amazed and feels like she's in a picture book where creatures like dragons and mummies exist. Sora tells her they do exist in reality but keep their existence hidden from humans, as some humans might hunt them for profit. He advises Asa not to tell anyone about them. While Maikun and the dragon become good friends and play happily, Tezuki arrives. Sora wants to blindfold Tezuki to surprise him. But the dragon comes out and spoils it, as dragon was the surprise. Sora then says that Tezuki always wanted to see the dragon. Seeing the dragon, Tezuki recalls the injured dragon he had encountered before. Now, they all sit with their spirit creatures. Asa offers meat to the dragon, but it refuses to eat. She tries offering different foods, but it continues to refuse. Asa wonders what she can give it since it's rejecting everything. Then, Maikun tries to give the dragon some dog food. Hearing their commotion, Sora's aunt comes out of the casket and is surprised to see that Sora brought a girl over, instead of being surprised by the new creatures, while Maikun ends up making a mess with berries. Finally, they discover what the dragon can eat, and now it's time to give a name to the dragon, which Asa has already decided will be, Isao. The next day in class, while talking with her classmates, Asa is about to mention her spirit creature Isao. Suddenly, she recalls Sora's words not to tell anyone, and both Sora and Tezuki feel relieved that she didn't reveal anything. On the way home, Tezuki reminds her of the mistake she almost made by revealing her dragon, and she apologizes for doing so. Tezuki says that she can talk about Isao with them whenever she wants. She becomes extremely happy and shares all the cute moments she's had with Isao. Sora then says that she can join them during lunch and they can talk more about their spirit creatures. At home, Sora tells his aunt that Asa and Tezuki will be coming over on Sunday so that their spirit creatures can have a playtime together. Suddenly, Maikun starts acting strangely while lying on the table. It turns out his back was itchy, so Sora scratches it for him. His aunt tells him that Maikun is more like a younger brother. When Sora looks at him, he agrees and shares the incidents. When he left Mai with Pachai and went to get the laundry, the phone rang. Hearing that Mai had climbed up to receive the call, after struggling, he picked up the call and started barking to respond to the woman on the call. When Sora saw this, he apologized, explaining that it was his dog. On another day, while he was cleaning up the bathroom, Mai tried to help but ended up slipping on the floor and getting hurt. His aunt smiles and says Mai-kun is more the cared for type than the caring type. These words pierced Mai's heart and he seems low. It's Sunday, and Little Dragon is hugging his friends when he meets them, he is so happy. While Sora, Tezuki, and Asa are engaged in conversation, Dragon starts flying with Mai and Oni on his back. Tezuki is amazed to see Little Dragon flying. Asa then informs them that she wants to show them something, it's a letter written by Isao. They are amazed that Dragon has learned to write. It appears that Dragon is very smart. Tezuki thinks about teaching him English letters. Sora believes Dragon can't do it. 
but Tazuki starts teaching him English letter. When he writes his name with a crayon on the paper, Tazuki is surprised by how quickly Dragon learns. Looking at their spirit creatures, they see Dragon teaching others. The small mummy then hands a letter to Sora. As Sora takes it, Asa's serious expression makes her advice opening it carefully, suggesting something big might be written inside. When he opens it, Sora's face brightens, and he happily says it's beyond cute. The message reads always together. Asa remembers her own experience when Isao gave her a letter for the first time. It said, thank you for everything, leaving her stunned. Sora realizes why Asa told him to open the letter carefully. They look over at Connie, who's writing something for Tazuki. Tazuki expects Connie to write a food name, joking that his spirit creature isn't very smart. Connie then approaches Tazuki and gives him the letter. Tazuki thinks it might be a food request, but it turns out Connie wrote, What do you think? Tazuki replies, I don't know, playfully annoying Connie again, and Connie starts kicking him back. Asa is watching them and is a bit worried Connie might get hurt. But Sora tells her not to worry as it's Tezuki's way of showing love. After having lunch, Asa helps Sora wash the dishes, but they run out of soap. Sora tells her to grab a refill from the lower cabinet. As she opens it, she finds a hidden letter from Isao. They realize that, their spirit creatures might have hidden these letters all over the house for them. As Tezuki also found a letter from Connie earlier, they decide to search for the letters. Asa uncovers a hidden room, but Sora stops her from opening it, as he has stored dangerous items like the Daruma doll sent by his father there. They continue to search in other places and end up collecting numerous letters. Now, Connie discovers a mandrake in the garden and he pulls it out of the ground, resulting in a deafening sound. Sora quickly places tape over its mouth to silence it. Asa asks why he keep this mandrake. Sora tells his father gifted it long time ago. Hearing its sound can be fatal that it can destroy a whole city but his aunt uses as an alarm to wake up at her own risk. Just then, Mandrake quickly rolls towards the wall and escape from there. They start searching for it. When Sora spots it, the Mandrake jumps down into the river. They rush to the river to catch it. Connie tries to help by jumping into the river, but it doesn't work. Next, Mai attempts to do the same but falls in the mud. Asa sees the Mandrake's tape about to come off. So, Little Dragon flies to captures it and brings it back. Everyone praises Isao for the help. But Mao looks down and hides in Sora's hoodie. Afterwards, Sora puts the mandrake back in the garden, and everyone feels relieved. As Sora watches all the creatures, Mai Kun appears a bit down. He then places a blanket over Connie, who got cold after falling into the river, and then wipes Connie's runny nose. Seeing Mai care for Connie, Sora realizes what his aunt meant. Mai is more of a cared for type than a caring type. This realization has been bothering Mai all this time because he wants to take care of others more. Sora smiles at this understanding, while Mai is puzzled by the smile, and receives a pat. In the evening, the little mummy waves goodbye to his friends after a good time spent together. They then begin waving fastly with both hands, causing Connie to fall off while doing so. Later, during their baths, Sora smiles seeing always together written on the mirror by Mai Kun. While Mai floats happily in the bathtub, in Asa's room, she thinks about taking a bath but feels too lazy. Isao waits, wondering when she will decide, then eventually goes to bathe himself, since Asa is taking too long. When Asa finally suggests bathing together, she finds Isao already done. As Connie nearly falls into the hot water tub, Kazuki saves him and ends up getting wet himself. Connie then gets his own bathtub. At night, Sora reads a story to Mai Kun, who sheds tears upon hearing it. Meanwhile, Isao shows a caring side towards Asa. He places a blanket on her to ensure she doesn't get cold and lies down beside her. While Tezuki is sleeping, Connie keeps bothering him. So, he grabs him to stop, and Connie falls asleep instantly. In the next scene, a boy named Daichai stands in a dark place. He becomes frightened as giant monsters appear in front of him. He steps back but is captured by them, causing him to scream louder. Suddenly, Daichai wakes up from his dream in the middle of class. As he looks around, everyone is watching him and calling him scary. He then walks out of class, feeling uneasy. He accidentally bumps into Sora, and falls over him. Meanwhile, Mai Kun stares longingly at the delicious food on the terrace while sitting with Tazuki and Asa. Tazuki tells Mai to start eating and not wait for Sora. When Sora arrives, carrying a sleeping Daichai on his back, Tazuki jokingly says, That's a big lunch you've got there Sora. Sora loses his grip, and drops Daichai, but Asa catches him. Tazuki wonders how they are so strong. As Mai Kun is eating an apple, they learn that Daichai is banned from the nurse's office after losing control of himself. As Asa puts a blanket on him, she notices Daichai is having a really bad dream. He wakes up, screaming and tries to punch Asa, but Sora saves her. Seeing Daichai's injured hands, Sora tries to help but is warned off. This angers Tazuki and he confronts Daichai. Looking at Tazuki's scary eyes, Daichai gets scared, but Sora stops Tazuki just in time. Daichai again starts feeling unwell, so he leaves, and they all are confused about what his problem is. 
Later, Sora goes to Daichai's class to check on him. As Daichai comes out of class, Sora gives him a bandage and asks him to walk home together, not even knowing his name. Sora finds out that Daichai lives alone in a condo and has a long-time habit of violently sleepwalking that started in elementary school. He tells him about protective charms he keeps to get rid of nightmares. Sora insists on seeing Daichai's protective charms, so they go to his condo where the windows are completely covered. Sora removes the protective charms from the window and says, you don't need this many. He then gives Daichai a drawing of a Baku, a creature that eats nightmares, and tells him to put it under his pillow, even though Baku are imaginary creatures. That night, Daichai keeps it under the pillow, as he falls asleep. He wakes up, and is surprised to see that the Baku drawing is working, as something is eating his nightmares. But, he is scared and calls Sora to tell him about it. Sora rushes over with Mai-kun. Upon entering Daichai's room, he is amazed to see a real Baku, and starts to pamper it, saying, it's so fluffy and cute. He then gives it to Daichai, who also feels its fluffiness. Afterwards, Daichai asks if the Baku eating dreams is a metaphor, prompting Sora to reveal Mai-kun, showing Daichai that these creatures are real. The next day on the terrace, Sora tells Tezuki and Asa about the Baku. While Mai is having noodles for lunch, Asa gets excited about the Baku and wants to see it, as Sora tells her it's fluffy and pillowy. So, they go to Daichai's class, but he was absent. The next day he is absent again. Sora wonders what happened to Daichai and why he is absent. After three days of this, a freshly groomed Daichai appears and tells them he was sleeping peacefully the whole time. He then apologizes to Asa for almost punching her in his sleep, and Asa says, it's fine, I understand. She then invites him to have lunch with them and he accepts it. Later on the terrace, an awkward atmosphere surrounds Daichai and Tezuki as they await Sora and Asa for lunch. Tezuki reintroduces himself and asks about Daichai's health and name to break the ice. They feel relaxed when the others arrive, with Mai-kun trying to get them to shake hands. Mai starts barking, and Sora understands that he wants both of them to shake hands. Mai confirms this with non-stop barking. They shake hands, and Mai-kun nudges them, wanting them to get along. This leads to all of them bursting into laughter. Later, Mai-kun, Isao, and Connie meet Baku. They climb on him, but he throws them away, appearing disinterested. When asked if he has named the Baku, Daichai says he's calling him Mukimuku for now, until he thinks of a proper name. As they all were on Baku, he moves to Daichai's head at a very high speed. Later, Sora tells him that Baku moves faster than the speed of sound. Suddenly, Pachai appears, and now Sora takes pictures of all the spirit creatures together while they are napping. The next day, Daichai meets Sora and thanks him for being a supportive friend during his difficult time. He credits Baku with stopping his sleepwalking and nightmares. A few days later, Daichai asks Sora to discover how Baku enters his locked room while he sleeps. Sora stays over to find out, and they put Baku outside, locking the door. Then Daichai goes to sleep and falls asleep instantly. Sora, who is just going to sleep, sees Daichai sleepwalking and opens the door himself, falling back to sleep. Biaku enters and starts eating his nightmares, but Sora wonders how Daichai is sleepwalking, so he asks Baku if he controls Daichai's sleepwalking. Baku confirms by making Daichai dance in his sleep. A shocked Sora realizes that Baku was behind Daichai's sleepwalking all along. The next day, as Asa rushes home with the thought of reuniting with Isao, she observes two men conversing about an oni baby they found during Setsuban and their current search for it. Upon reaching home, Asa holds Isao in her hand and notices that Connie is also there. Later, when they all gather, Asa tells Tezuki that Connie came her house to play with Isao alone. It could be risky if he continues to come alone as two men were searching for Oni. So, Tezuki suggests finding a temporary caretaker for them and leaving the kids in a safe place before heading to school. Sora tells them, I have someone in mind who can watch over the kids while we're at school. Meanwhile, Oni is playing game of tag with Baku, and Isao clings to Daichai's face, causing him to fall along with Mai. The next morning, they arrive at the location. Sora covers us to a talking statue, thanking him to accept their request. Asa and Daichai are amazed that the statue can talk. Sora introduces them to the statue as Grandpa, who lives in the shrine. Asa asks Tezuki if he also knows the statue. Tezuki confirms. Then the statue reveals that Sora and Tezuki helped him wash his back and do other tasks. Tezuki quickly silences the statue as he's embarrassed. As, Asa and Daichai start talking with the statue. Unexpectedly, Mukumuku emerges from back Mai, startling Daichai. And Kani smacked Grandpa's head, so he got scolded. As they are about to leave their spirit creatures at the shrine, someone appears behind Sora, grabbing him. It extremely frightened Asei and Daichai as it dragged Sora inside the shrine. They rush towards the door, and upon opening it, they discover Sora calmly enjoying a cup of tea. He sees Daichai and tells them that she is the god of this place. As they express their gratitude, Tazuki and Connie join them. Now they all enjoy the tea. Sora tells them she will look after their spirit creatures when they are at school. 
Then, they head to school. During break time, they all wonder what their spirit creatures might be doing at that moment. After school, when they visit the shrine, Isao hugs Asa, showing that he missed her. Mei runs towards Sora to return home. While Connie is still playing with the Baku, Sora observes Mei, who looks livelier and more radiant, a complete contrast to his usual dehydrated state when not with Sora. The next morning, Sora leaves Mei Kun with the other creatures in the shrine, and departs for school, with Mei Kun waving goodbye to him. Now, all the spirit creatures are playing while the shrine's god looks after them. However, while chasing Connie, Mukimuku accidentally bumps into the door, slightly opening it. Observing the open door, Mai becomes intrigued to spot a bug. Mai ventures out and lets the bug crawl on him. The shrine's god notices the open door and closes it. Mai is left outside, trying to knock on the door, but he's too small to make a sound. Someone passing by notices something and stops. Mai hides as the person looks around. Just then, an oni appears, startling Mai, who begins to run away. The oni stops him and asks if he is lost and is alone. But, Mai misinterprets the oni's gestures, thinking, Are you also going up? Let's go together. Mai Kun nods his head, and the oni takes him along. Oni took Mai Kun inside the deep forest. Mai looked back as he was supposed to go in shrine but is going in opposite direction. Oni gave him a large leaf so he wouldn't get wet in the rain. Mai was confused, but he still followed oni. While other spirit creatures are napping inside the shrine, the shrine god realized that one spirit creature was missing and confirmed it by counting them. As Mai followed Oni, he saw a beautiful white fox, who passes from there. He also saw a spirit creature in the sky. Then three spirit children giggling, and a unicorn passing by his side, with its back shining brightly. Mai was amazed to see them. Right then, Oni took Mai to continue to head and Mai follows him. Meanwhile, the shrine god was searching for Mai Kun. Now, Oni took Mai Kun inside a tree. As Mai enters in, he looked around. Just then Oni brought some water and a cloth to clean Mai Kun's back. Mai also cleaned Oni and he felt good. He started conversing with Oni, asking if he lives there alone. But Oni misinterpreted it and blushed, thinking Mai was complimenting the nice and spacious home. Oni then suggested that Mai stay there until the rain stopped. But Mai thought Oni meant he would never go home. He got scared and started crying. Oni panicked and brought a glowing mushroom that would guide Mai out of the dark forests. But Mai thought Oni was trying to make him eat poisonous mushroom. Now, thundering started and Oni got scared of it. Mai went closer to him, rubbing his back and making him blush again. Mai looked out and started telling him something. Finally, Oni realized that Mai Kun might not be lost. He just wanted to get to the shrine. Seeing Mai Kun sad, he told him he will drop him back, and Mai felt happy that he understood. Mai and Oni came out and saw a beautiful rainbow. Meanwhile, the shrine god was still searching for Mai, and the talking statue was also sad for not finding him. Just when she had lost all hope, suddenly the shrine god felt Mai's presence. He was running towards her, and as he jumped, she grabbed him and felt so happy that he was back. Mai Kun then said goodbye to his new friend and then Oni leaves. After school, when Sora came to pick up Mai Kun, the shrine god told him everything. Sora then says to Mai Kun never to go out alone again, and asked if he had thanked Oni for bringing him back. Mai Kun shook his head no. At night, the white fox told Oni that there is something for him near the shrine. Oni went towards the shrine and found a letter from Mai Kun under it. As Mai Kun stayed awake, wondering if Oni got the letter, Sora comforted him. Other creatures might have told Oni, who could be reading it now. True enough, the letter was on Oni's wall with Mai Kun's thanks and then he smiled. In the next scene, we see Tezuki drying his hair with a towel after a shower. Just then, his sister comes and asks, is that stupid piggy Connie with you? Tezuki asks, what happened? She tells him, look, Connie ate my cake again. While Connie is sleeping carefree, she tells Tezuki that Sora made it for her. She starts crying and says that she was planning to eat it after school. Tezuki wipes her tears and says, I will ask Sora to make more for you, but she replies, I can forgive Connie once or twice, but this is the ninth time. This shocks Tezuki while Connie continues sleeping. Later that night, Tezuki tries to explain to Connie that what he did was wrong. However, Connie doesn't want to listen, which angers Tezuki. He tells Connie to leave his house as he always causes trouble. Connie starts recalling moments when people threw stones at him, leaving him feeling alone. He feels similarly now, but pretends not to care and falls asleep. The next morning, Tezuki wakes up and realizes that Connie isn't home, he left. During lunch at school, they all talk about their spirit creatures. Sora tells that Mai Kun always writes always together and apples. H.I. asks if it's not a little scary when Mai Kun keeps writing always together like that. Sora explains that Mai Kun has only learned those letters and memorized them as pictures or symbols. That day also Mai Kun explained Isao what he wanted to write, and Isao turned it into letters so he could write it. While they're talking about their spirit creatures, Tezuki seems preoccupied. Sora asks him what happened and why he didn't bring Connie to the shrine in mourning. 
Tezuki tells that Connie has gone somewhere and he always does what he wants. Later, Tezuki arrives home, and his sister tells him that she made rice cakes for Connie because she was too harsh on him the previous day. But, Connie hasn't come downstairs yet. Tezuki becomes worried and checks his room, thinking Connie might be playing a prank by hiding. But Connie is nowhere to be found. Night falls, and Connie is still not home. Tezuki wonders if he has actually left. He feels regret for always trying to push Connie away from the beginning. The next day, Sora asks Tezuki if he's okay, as he seems sleep-deprived. Later, he drops the notebooks, and then orders the wrong drink from the vending machine. Tezuki appears lost the whole day, to the extent that his classmate has to tell him he is holding his book upside down. Meanwhile, Maikun is using crayons to write something with Isao and Baku. On the terrace, Tezuki confides in Sora that Connie hasn't been home since the previous day. Sora says let's find him, but Tezuki insists that there's no need. Connie left on his own. But Sora consents Tezuki's worry for Connie. In the shrine, Maikun tries to imitate Connie as everyone is missing him badly. But, he couldn't make them feel better. Later, all of them meet with Tezuki and suggest they all search for Connie together. After school, Tezuki reminisces about his past. He remembers trying to save a dragon when he was a child from a man who wanted to harm it. However, the man found them and attacked, leaving Tezuki traumatized. Driven by these memories, Tezuki starts running to find Connie. Meanwhile, Sora and others reach the shrine and inform Maikun and the rest that they are searching for Connie, and reassure them that they will bring Connie back. Back to Tezuki, he's still running to find Connie and reflects on their relationship. He finds solace when he sees Connie sleeping beside him. Despite Connie's annoying behavior, Tezuki cares for him deeply. Suddenly, Sora also appears, and they spot Connie. They chase after him, but he's too fast for Tezuki to catch. Connie escapes. Tezuki then sees him running on the road. Sora runs after him, but the Oni child turns out not to be Connie. Meanwhile, poor Maikun is drawing Connie with crayons, wiping his tears as the dragon comforts him. Now, Kazuki finds Connie stuck in the wall and gently helps him to get out. Sora arrives, running, and tells Tezuki that the Oni baby they were chasing wasn't the real Connie. Asa and Daichai also appear, with teary eyes, Asa shows Connie's torn pants. She tells that they found his pants near the river, but Connie was missing. Sora says let's search the area again, but Kazuki stops him, saying that he already found Connie. Everyone looks at Connie with tears of joy that he's safe. Connie holds a flower in his hand, with no pants on. Sora asks Asa and Daichai why they are wet, and they reply that they jumped into the river to find Connie. Kazuki thanks them for help, and they tell him that he should depend on his friends more. Back at the shrine, they are amazed to see a picture made by Maikun and others that symbolizes always together, just as Maikun writes in his letters. Kazuki tells Connie that everyone was worried about him, but now they're happy he's back, including himself. On the way back home, Kazuki talks to Connie, explaining that what he did was wrong. He tells him that eating someone else's snack without asking is bad and he made Tsukio sad. Kazuki also shares his past experience of trying to save a dragon and getting traumatized. That experience made him hesitant to have a pet, fearing he wouldn't be able to save them someday. But now he realizes that he can't live without Connie so he wants to live with him happily and promises to always come to save him. At this, Connie recalls moments of people hurting him with stones. He also remembers seeing a girl with her mother, holding hands. He wanted same caring connection. And tears well up in Connie's eyes. Seeing him crying, Tezuki reaches out his hand, giving Connie the caring connection he longed for. Upon arriving home, Sora discovers a letter from his aunt along with a box. The letter explains that she is away for work, and the box is sent by Sora's father. All of a sudden, the box begins to shake, giving a weird presence, scaring Sora and Mai, as his father might have sent something dangerous again. Just then, the doorbell rings, it is Tezuki and Oni at the door. Instead of opening the door, Sora tells Kazuki on the phone to come back later as he's busy. But, Tezuki goes to Sora's backyard and asks him to open the door. He says, Sora always keeps him out when his dad sends something. Sora lets Tezuki in, but the strange aura from the box still has them on guard. Mai and Connie get ready with their weapons, along with Sora, to protect themselves. As Sora insisted, Tezuki take the kids out as it's not safe inside. Just then, the box opens by itself, releasing a black fog. The creature's eyes glow from the fog as it questions why Sora is prepared to attack him. As the fog clears out, they see it's a talking Anubis statue. Sora asks if the creature won't attack them, and Anubis responds that Sora was the one who seemed hostile. Anubis is quite talkative and reveals that Sora's father had a hard time choosing a gift, considering Sora's previous fear of items like Daruma dolls. Sending Anubis this time, his father wants to offer something Sora might like. This revelation makes Sora realize how much his father cares about him. 
Anubis then notices the small mummy and asks Sora about it. Sora introduces Mai to him, and Mai is shivering as he is scared of Anubis. He disagrees, saying that Mai can't be a mummy, as a lizard mummy he has encountered before had been completely shriveled. In the next instant, Sora is startled, as Anubis places Mai in his mouth to confirm if he's a mummy. Anubis reassures, fear not, my gentle nibbling is known for its pleasantness. Mai Kun, who was struggling a while ago, now starts enjoying it. Anubis eventually releases Mai, but uncertain about his mummy identity. Sora says that Mai isn't an ordinary mummy. Anubis says, I am not ordinary either. I have the power to predict the future. Anubis proceeds, tonight, there's going to be rainfall. But they can already see that. Then, looking at the ingredients, he says, today, we'll have curry for dinner. They realize that his future prediction ability is just a bluff. Now, seeing Mai happily playing on the back of Anubis, Sora says, Mai has already become Anubis' friend. Just then, Tezuki looks inside the box and tells Sora that there is a letter and something at the bottom. Sora stops Tezuki from touching it, concerned it might be dangerous. Anubis tells that it's sand from Egypt, sent by Sora's father along with him. Sora wears gloves and carefully empties the sand into a container, in case it contains a poisonous scorpion. But it is normal. Mai Kun looks happy to see it, as it's sand from Egypt, his home place. While Connie starts hitting the container, confusing everyone. Mai wants to play in sand. Sora picks up Mai and as he's put him in, some sand gets blown onto Sora's face. Seeing cute mummy enjoy himself in the sand makes Sora really happy. Later, Anna and Daichai arrive at Sora's house. Sora says, I want you to meet a new friend. Just then, they see Pachai pulling Anubis on a rope while they were playing. All of a sudden, Pachai stops, causing Anubis and Mai to crash into the wall. Later on, as all the creatures gather around Anubis, Asa becomes frightened as she sees Anubis eating her dragon. Sora says that he's just nibbling him as he enjoys nibbling on things. Anubis then tries to feel the Baku, but the Baku becomes uncomfortable and lands on the sofa. Now, Baku and Isao are resting on the side, while Mai and the others are still playing with Anubis. Sora and his friends are also enjoying their time together. Little Mai stands on Anubis and slides down his back. Sora compliments Asa, saying her hair clips look great on her. Tazuki thinks that Sora says whatever he likes without getting embarrassed. He remembers that he often gives compliments, even to Tezuki, and wonders if there's anything that can make Sora embarrassed. Right then, Sora starts hiccuping. He gets so embarrassed of it that he tries to leave. Daichai hands him water to drink. Meanwhile, Mai Kun and others are playing with balls, sitting closer to them. Tezuki says, I heard if you get a hundred hiccups, you could die. This scares all the creatures so much that Mai is almost in tears. Right then, Sora notices Mai, whose bandage was coming out. He dashes toward Mai, accidentally splashing water on Anubis. Sora reaches out to fix Mai's bandage, but Mai jumps onto Pachai's back, and Pachai quickly carries him away. He tries to catch them, but Isao and Connie block his path. They see that Pachai is carrying away Mai, who trying to loosen the bandage even more. Seeing this, Tezuki recalls a time when he tries to undo Mai's bandage to see what's inside. Now that Mai is trying it on his own, Tezuki sees it as the perfect opportunity to uncover what's beneath. He stops Sora from reaching Mai by holding him from behind. Asa notices this and hurries behind Mai to stop him. But she accidentally loosens his bandage even further. Sora asks Tezuki to let him go. Just then, Tezuki is overwhelmed by a strong brightness in the room, and Sora manages to break free from his grasp. He cries out loudly, causing Mai Kun and Pachai to stop running. He tells Mai that he can't take off the bandage as some bad may happen, remembering it was mentioned in his father's letter not to do so. Poor Mai nods his head with teary eyes. He jumps off Pachai's back and runs towards Sora. Asa asked why Mai wanted to remove the bandage. But all of a sudden, all the spirit creatures started hiccuping, and it was non-stop. Asa realized and asked if they did was to stop Sora's hiccups, and all the creatures nodded. Tezuki clarified that dying after a hundred hiccups was just a superstition. Mai ran towards Sora with teary eyes, feeling relieved after hearing this. Sora now starts re-wrapping the Mai's bandages. Just then, Asa says they must leave now as it's already late. Sora takes fully Mai wrapped in his hand and says it's time to say goodbye to everyone. As they head back home, Asa says that all the creatures are spirits except for Pachai, who is normal here. Sora tells that Pachai is not a normal dog, he can live for 100 years, and right now he is 50 years old. The next day, one of Sora's classmates shows him a picture of a unique looking dog. The dog was bleeding and found near the mountain, but it disappeared quickly. Kazuki and Sora realize it was probably a spirit creature, but remain silent. Later, they all meet on the terrace and decide to go and look for that spirit creature in case it might be hurt. At night, Sora playfully tickles the adorable Mai Kun who is sleeping beside him. Just then, Anubis appears and tells Sora that there is a foreign drama he wants to watch tonight. Sora goes and switches on the TV for him and sits with him for a while. 
The next day, Mai doesn't want to leave Sora and go into the shrine with others. Last night, he woke up from a nightmare and didn't find Sora beside him. He's been scared since then. Mai wants to be with Sora, so the shrine god puts a tag on Mai's back. The statue grandpa tells them that it's in case Mai gets lost, and the tag will help. After school, they make their way to the mountain to find the injured spirit creature. When they reach the stairs, they come across a fork in the path. They decide to separate into two groups, Tezuki and Asa take one path, while Daichai accompanies Sora on the other. Sora and Daichai starts their search along with Mai Kun. On the other side, Asa called out for the spirit creature in Yugami. Tezuki then told her, let's head back, as they couldn't find anything. They then reunited with Sora and Daichai as no one find any creature. All of a sudden, Sora senses something unusual. Kazuki points out, look, the two paths have merged into one. At that moment, they hear music, and everyone is confused by the festival-like sound. This triggers a memory for Sora. He recalls a time when Tezuki refused to go to the spirit god festival with him, suggesting they find humans to play with instead of spirit creatures. This surprises Sora, and it explains why they never attended the festival. He realizes that this is the festival time again. Sora tells everyone that wandering into the spirit god festival without an invitation is not permitted. Suddenly, the spirit guards who check invitations appear and ask them to present their invitation. Sora approaches the guards and explains that they got lost and ended up here. The guard realizes they don't have an invitation and transforms into a monster, saying now you have to face the punishment. Everyone becomes frightened by the intimidating creature, and Mai Kun hides inside Sora's pocket. Sora says, punish me and leave my friends, but Tezuki gets angry, wondering what the hell Sora is saying. The creature finds Sora amusing but refuses to accept his offer of respect and grabs him in its hands, while the others are also caught by the guards from behind. Just as they were about to be punished, Mai jumps out with the invitation from Sora's pocket and lands on the creature's head with loud barking. The creature returns to normal and says to Mai, if you had shown the invitation earlier, you wouldn't have had to face all this. Suddenly, Kazuki rushed over to Sora, gave him a hit, and says, you always do whatever you want, before dashing away. Sora chased Tezuki and questioned why he reacted that way, wondering if Sora had done something to upset him. Just then, a spirit creature named Yamada appears, recognizing Sora quite well. Yamada hugs Sora tightly, making Mai Kun try to intervene because Sora felt uncomfortable. Afterwards, Sora realized that the invitations they had given to the guards were the ones Yamada had given him a while ago. He then asks Yamada if he has seen the injured spirit creature in Yugami. Yamada replies that he knows where Inugami is and will guide them. He shares that Inugami isn't hurt anymore and that there are two Inugami who always stay together. A while ago, one gets hurt and is seen by humans, but the other arrives in time to rescue him. As they spot the Inugamis, the red one bites the blue one and throws him away, and runs in one direction, while the blue one also flees in another direction. Seeing this, Sora and Kazuki recall their fight and decide to handle the situation. The blue-collared Inugami is crying and sits beside Sora, so little Mai tries to comfort him by rubbing his head. Sora asks him if he is crying because he hurt his friend in some way, and Inugami nods. Sora tells him that he also hurt his friend but now he realizes, he will fix it. On the other side, Tezuki chases after the other Inugami. He sees the Inugami kicking a tree out of anger and pain. Tezuki stops him, saying that hurting himself won't solve anything. He shares that he sometimes feels the same when he's hurt, and tears come out of Inugami's eyes. Just then, his friend arrives and jumps over him, and both Inugamis are happy together. Sora and Kazuki also smile. Now, a man hands in his invitation, and as he enters, the guards notice blood on it and realize he's a collector. Meanwhile, Sora asks Kazuki why he refused to attend the festival back then and urged Sora not to get involved with these creatures. Kazuki finally reveals that he once tried to save a dragon from a collector, putting his own life at risk. He feared that if Sora got into similar danger, he wouldn't be able to bear the pain of losing his friend. Hearing this tears well up in Sora's eyes. Suddenly, the drums begin, and all the creatures start moving in that direction as the festival begins. Kazuki tells Sora to hold on to his t-shirt so as not to get lost in the crowd. He assures Sora that he'll never leave him alone. Later, they all watch the waterfall, and Yamada tells that its water cleanses both the body and soul. Inugami jump into the water to enjoy a bath with his friend. Sora places Mai Kun near the waterfall. While they all watch as the Inugami climbing the waterfall, someone takes Mai Kun away from there. Two guards arrive and ask if they've seen any suspicious men around. Just then, Sora realizes that Mai Kun is missing. Sora cries out Mai Kun and runs to find him. Yamada asks where he is going. He replies Mai is missing, I can't find him. A guard comes and tells them, human who entered without an invitation might have taken the Mai. Shattered by this, Sora thinks he will lose the Mai forever. Yamada says not to worry, the guards will find him and bring back Mai. 
Daichai reminds them about the tag that the shrine god put on Mei with that they can find him. Upon realizing this, Sora starts calling out for Mei loudly. On the other side, the collector has Mei with him. Mei is scared as he says, from you, I will get a lot of money and tries to open his bandages to look inside. The tag detaches from his body with the connecting thread. Tezuki then tells everyone to look above, but others couldn't able to see anything near the area of waterfall. Mai's tag is in the air, Tezuki can see that far due to his good eyesight. Sora asks Yamada for directions to reach there, but the route he told was too long. Sora decides to climb through the rocks at the side of the waterfall to reach there fastly. At that moment, Ase calls Sora closer and offers to throw him as high as she can. Sora runs to her and she throws him halfway up the rocks. He begins climbing the rocks, eager to reach Mai quickly. But on trying to place his foot on another rock, he slips and starts falling from the height. Everyone is shocked by witnessing this. But, Inugamis arrive in time and save Sora from falling. They start climbing together to help Sora reach the top. As they reach there Sora thanks the Inugami. Now they spot Mei Kun's tag. Collector breaks the thread to detach the Mei from it. As it breaks, poor Mummy tries to escape, but the Collector catch him. Just then, Sora appears and tells him to return the Mei. He barks in pain from being hurt, but the Collector silences him by squeezing. Sora jumps onto the Collector and tries to take Mei from him. But he pushes Sora back, saying that this creature will earn me a lot of money. Sora says give back my he is my family, not any object to sell. Suddenly, the voice of the spirit god is heard, saying, foolish human face punishment for your sins. Roots emerge from the ground, capturing the collector. The black cloud appears and as lightning strikes, Mai comes flying off and lands on Sora's hands. While Collector gets shocked by it, and is found lying unconscious on the ground, he hugs Mai Kun and is relieved to have him back. Guards have captured the Collector, and he's asking to set him free. A few spirit creatures approach with gifts. Yamada tells Sora, the gifts are for him, he is the hero who caught the thief. And Mai Kun also receives a gift which he likes very much. Afterwards, Sora gives one gift to the Shrine God, upon returning. She blushes as Sora thanks her for the Mai's tag. Just then, Asa notices Connie kicking Tezuki, who wants to play more. Seeing this, Sora suggests they hang out at his home. Keed welcomes everyone inside. Daichai stares at her, saying, You look like a model whose fan I am. Sora confirms that she is indeed that model and, he holds her hand excitedly, saying, I am your huge fan. Now, seeing the gift box, Anubis asks about it. Sora tells that it's a gift from the festival. Other creatures take him away as he starts complaining about not being taken to the festival. He soon realizes, others are sulking because they didn't get to attend, and they all make angry faces. Connie jumps to kick Tezuki, but he fails to do so. Daichai tells Baku, it wasn't intentional. But he jumps to smack him. Asa holds Isao closer and hugs but he didn't respond. Now, Sora gazes at the box and tells about a folk tale, big boxes may contain dangerous things. Everyone is on guard and hesitatingly, Sora opens it. In the next moment, we get to know that the box was having the festival set. They all are wearing kimonos. Tezuki says that no one could have guessed the box would have all this. He asks Ki where she got all these costumes, and she says that she had them from work. All the creatures appear wearing their costumes, amazing Ki and Asa with how cute they look. To play a game, Daichai ties string on Baku and he runs with a fast speed, pulling a cloth. But it flies away from Daichai's hand because it was a magical cloth. Next, Tezuki is ready to play the shooting game but the targets start moving. As he is about to shoot, Connie interferes to play first. But, he misses the target and angrily starts punching Kazuki. Mai tries to shoot, but the band hits him instead of the target. Now, Kazuki shoots at the targets and doesn't miss a single shot, winning the weird masks. Everyone starts laughing seeing Connie wearing one of the masks, which looks weird but funny. Next, Isao tries to get a balloon using bait. He tries to pull the orange one, and Asa helps him ending up pulling all the balloons attached to the orange one. She says good job Isao, and all the creatures start playing with them. Anubis asks Sora to put one in his mouth. But as he tries to nibble it, balloon bursts in his mouth. Sora starts laughing, and Tezuki throws a towel over his head. They both then sit in the corner and watch the others enjoy. Mai comes towards Sora, and he feels good as he enjoys the moment. He tells everyone, I want to be with you all, always like this. Let's go on vacations during summer breaks together. Daichai excitedly says, how about going in the beach, but Anubis wants to go camping in the mountains. All the spirit creatures also look excited to go. Tezuki looks at Sora and says, we will be forever together. The next morning, Mai Kun wakes up as Sora calls him for breakfast. 
They both pray before eating. Little Mummy starts eating, but he spills water on himself. Seeing him to struggle, Sora cleans him, saying, Are you okay, my cun? Afterward, he helps Sora put out the clothes to dry, and then to remove the dirt from the mattress. With this, the story ends here. Hope you liked it. Don't forget to like the video if it brought a smile to your face. And which spirit creature did you like the most throughout the story? Tell us in the comment box and hit the subscribe button.